Lead Oakley. Here we go, folks. This is chapter six. 6.1, we're going to be looking at trig identities and what we call trig equations and identities, essentially. Okay, so a trig equation and a trig identity, they have a bit of a difference here. Let's look at a couple of uh, definitions here. First of all, an equation, right? When you solve for an equation, say something like this, uh, sine theta is equal to 1, or let's even make it easier or, or a different one. Remember, we did this, sine um, minus 1 equals 0. So we make equations often equal to 0, and we're looking for where they cross the x-axis, right? So these have specific values. So it's only true for specific values of theta. If you're going to solve this, right, you go sine theta is equal to 1, and then you actually look at a graph or you look at a unit circle and figure out where sine is equal to 1. And if you drew a sine wave, you'd realize it equals 1 here at pi over 2. So your solution here would be theta is equal to pi over 2, uh, and that's over the interval, right, from 0, um, between 0 and 2 pi. And if you wanted a general solution, well, you can see that that would occur every 2 pi. So you could say theta is equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi uh, n, and n would just be an integer, right? So it's after 1, 2 pi, so one full revolution or maybe another one, or even going backwards, okay? So that's solving an equation where we actually have a specific value, okay? Now, there are certain things um, that have that is true for every possible values, and this is what we call an identity, okay? So an identity is something that is just true for everything, and you will see very shortly what I'm talking about um, but I'm going to introduce, first of all, the basic six trig ratios that we've dealt with in the past, right? The six basic trig ratios. And what we need to understand is where this comes from, right? If I have a triangle, say it's on an xy axis like this, right? Where this is your theta, we've called that the y, we call that the x, and we call that the r. So sine theta y over r, right? Cos theta x over r. That's how we get all these trig ratios. And the one thing you need to understand from this as well, or remember, is that we have this Pythagorean relationship as well, okay? x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So if you actually wanted to solve for r, you'd see that it'd be x squared, or the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay? So this is something that we have to remember. Let me put this in here too. So as um, remembering that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared because that will come up again very shortly when we try to prove some of these identities, okay? Now, the first thing that we have are reciprocal identities, okay? These are the most basic ones. You know, hopefully by now, that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, right? One over sine. And secant is the reciprocal of cos. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tan. Um, what is pretty useful to remember when you have these identities, so you're going to have a list of identities like this. We have what we call reciprocal identities, and we're going to look at quotient identities, and we're going to look at Pythagorean identities. All these can be derived from existing known truths, if you like. And uh, what we can also do is rearrange these, right? So uh, just because we have this one specifically, hopefully you can see that if we rearrange it into something like this, right? That has to be true as well. And we understand, hopefully, the idea of what a reciprocal is. This is a reciprocal of that. And one of the definitions or the definition of a reciprocal is that their product is one. So two numbers are reciprocals if their product is one. And these indeed are reciprocals. And so are these. So we can rewrite all of these in a different way to get another identity, right? Because sometimes we might have to rearrange them to prove what it is that we have. So these are the basic identities called reciprocal identities. The next ones we look at are what we call quotient identities, okay? And this is uh, tan theta is equal to sine over cos. And by definition, if cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, then it equals the reciprocal of this one here. So cot is cos over sine. Uh, I'd be happy to prove these for you. If you can remember up here, right, sine is y over r. So if I have sine theta, right, over cos theta, well, that would be sine, which is y over r, over cos, which is x over r. And if you rearrange these, it's y over r times r over x. Those cancel. You end up with y over x, which is essentially your tan theta right? So what we've done is we've just proven the quotient identity using the basic idea 
of um, the basic trait ratios, okay? Uh, and again, by definition, cotangent, therefore, would have to be the reciprocal of this fraction, so it would be cos over sine. There you go, all right? Um, we got a couple more here that we want to prove. We have Pythagorean identities, okay? We have Pythagorean identities. And what I'm going to ask you to look at quickly is the idea of what Pythagoras is. Okay, so we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? We've got that relationship here. Well, let's look at the sine and cos because they have the x and y in it. So let's just try and do something here. If I say sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, I want you to think about what that equals. Okay, well, sine squared theta is y over r. So I have y squared over r squared plus cos squared theta is x over r. Oh, sorry, you can't see this. There we go. I'll get rid of the, let's just do this. Um, and then cos squared theta is x squared over r squared, right? And then we'll figure out what that equals in a sec. If we want to combine these, right? They both have a common denominator right now. So what I can do is simply do this, x squared plus y squared on the top. Now, if you look at this original relationship here that we talked about, right? This relationship right here, where you have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, boom, right there, or this right here, right? So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, or similarly, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So x squared plus y squared is r squared over r squared is equal to one. And this is actually what we call a Pythagorean identity. Okay, this is a Pythagorean identity now. And um, what we do with these now is we can rearrange them or do some stuff with this first one to get these others. And uh, before I do that, I wanted to show you again that we can rearrange all these. Like we rearrange the reciprocals, you can rearrange these into being cos theta times tan theta is equal to sine theta. Very, very useful to be able to make those uh, extensions, right? And similarly here, if you multiply sine theta by both sides, you end up with another identity, okay? Uh, now, if we look at these sine ones, let's look at this one. We'll start with sine squared plus cos squared. So hopefully you can see where I've got this identity from, right? Hopefully you can see where I... How I've just, how I created that identity. Uh, if I didn't go back and have a look, and now we're going to do a couple different things. Um, let's divide everything by sine squared theta. And then we can simplify that becomes one. And then cos squared over sine squared. Well, as cos over sine is cotangent, then cos squared over sine squared is cot squared. So we have cot squared theta. And then 1 over sine squared is uh, cosecant squared theta. And what you can see is we end up with this identity here as well. Okay? Um, if we look at the next one, right? If we look at the next one, so instead of dividing by, say, um, hold on here, sorry about that. Instead of dividing by, say, sine squared theta, let's divide everything by cos squared theta. So we'll start with the original one again, and now I'm going to divide everything by cos squared theta, and then cos squared theta and cos squared theta. So sine over cos, if you look up here, right, sine over cos is your tan. So sine squared over cos squared would be tan squared theta, and then cos squared over cos squared is 1, and this becomes secant squared theta. That's the reciprocal identity, right? And then we end up with our third Pythagorean identity. Now, just as I mentioned before, okay, you have to get that you can rearrange these. So for this first one here, you could have sine um, squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta, okay? You gotta be able to rearrange these and see that there are multiple versions of each of these identities. Similarly, cos squared theta would be one minus sine squared theta, okay? now. As an aside, I'd like you to look at this, okay? Sine squared theta is equal to the same as sine theta squared. It's squaring the whole thing. You have to be aware that it's not the theta. This is very different from this, 
okay? Because here and there, you're actually squaring the theta value, right? Which would affect your sign. So what we've got here, guys, is a list of identities. These things need to be in front of you. You do not need to remember these, but you need to know how to use them. You will be given an identity sheet once we complete all of the identities. There are still several more, but this is a good start. What types of questions are we going to be doing? Well, these are the types of questions that we are going to be doing. All right, so we're going to be asked to simplify things like this. So, 2 cos x, 1 minus sine squared x. Well, if we look at our identities, is there anything that we... These are like little puzzles here, okay? So, is there anything from this that we can actually get? Now, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. We've got this thing here. Can you make a connection between these two? And hopefully you can see that if you go 1, bring that over minus sine squared theta, it's going to equal cos squared theta. Right? So in this case, you're going to have 2 cos x, and 1 minus sine squared theta will turn into cos squared theta. That cos will take one of those, and you end up with 2 over cos theta, which ends up becoming 2 secant theta. Boom. You're done. You've simplified it as far as you can. Okay? Now that's significantly prettier than that, and that's kind of the idea. All right, so let's have a look at another one. Here we go. 1 plus sine x and 1 over cos x. Mm -hmm. We've got to figure out a way to combine these, possibly a common denominator. But if you look at all your identities, you never have a, whenever there's a 1 involved like this, you always have sine squareds, right? So what I'm asking you to think about is the, a difference of squares. Um, I want to multiply this by something to make it a sine squared, but I don't want to multiply it by the same thing because if I went 1 plus sine x and I squared that 1 plus sine x, you'd see that you have 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x. Now, this middle term here ends up screwing us up. So how do you remember getting rid of that middle term? And hopefully you can see that it's by multiplying by what we call the conjugate. Right? So if I multiply this by 1 minus sine x, I have to multiply the bottom by 1 minus sine x. I want to get rid of this one too, so 1 plus sine x. That's the conjugate, right? Remember, a difference is squares. And then you have to remember also, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom as well. So uh, what happens here is that we're going to, let me just uh, get a piece of paper here. We're going to multiply this out. And you are essentially foiling, okay? So this is going to be 1. Let me get a sharper pencil here. 1 plus sine x minus sine x. They cancel out. I get minus sine squared x. And this is all over. Um, what do I got here? Let's just go cos x times 1 minus sine x. I won't simplify it yet. And if I multiply the top here, I've got cos x times 1 plus sine x, and on the bottom I have 1 minus sine squared x again, right? So we've got two things that have 1 minus sine squared x. So what do we do here? What do we do here? Let's see if I can simplify. So 1 minus sine squared x. If you look at that again, right? 1 minus, that's a cos squared x. So this is going to turn into cos squared x all over cos x. 1 minus sine x minus, this becomes cos x. 1 plus sine x all over cos squared x, right? So we're getting closer. Um, hopefully you can see that one of these coses takes one of those. So you end up with cos x, sorry, I'm not showing you the rest, cos x, so this is cos squared, one of those coses takes that one, so you have one cos x on the top, and you have one minus sine x on the bottom, and then we have this, that cos x goes away, leaves me with a cos x on the bottom, so I have one plus sine x all over cos x, am I ending up back where I belong, where I started, pretty much, eh? 
Hmm. Well, so this is one of those situations where sometimes you go down a path and it doesn't actually allow you to simplify. So if I'm here, how am I going to combine these two, right? Well, let's think about that then. If I want to combine them, let's multiply by a common denominator. Oh, that's funny how I ended up back where I belonged, eh? Or where I started. So let's look at a common denominator here. So my common denominator will be 1 minus sine x times cos x, okay? That means the top here will be cos squared x, right? Because I have to multiply that by cos. And this will be 1 uh, minus 1 minus sine squared x because I have to multiply this side by cos x and cos x. I have to multiply this side by 1 minus sine x, 1 minus sine x. So now, uh, 1 minus sine x, you can see, 1 minus sine will be cos squared x. So you'll have cos squared x minus cos squared x, which is equal to 0. And that's basically, we're done. 0 over anything is 0, so we've got 0. That was kind of a weird one. I apologize for that not working out perfectly well, but it sort of illustrates the idea that sometimes we end up going down the wrong path, okay? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You just have to realize that you have to start over and, and um, try a different path, okay? Don't get discouraged. It will all be good. Here's an example of a different type of situation. We have done lots of factoring in the past. We just haven't dealt with... Uh, trig functions when we do it, but hopefully you can see that each of these has a cos x in the top, and when I factor out a cos x, I end up with cot x plus 1. If I factor the bottom, I can take out a cot x, and I'm left with 1 plus cot x. Hopefully you can see that these are the same. Boom! So what you end up with is cos x over cot x. Now that's not fully finished because we don't really want the cot. So let's call it cos x, and we can see that cot x is cos x over sine x. So what you end up having, this whole thing simplifies to those cancel that comes up, you get sine x. If you can't see that, folks, it's like flipping times. So I have cos x, and I'm multiplying it by this, but flipped. So sine x over cos x, they cancel, and you're left with sine x. This is only the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, okay? It is only the beginning of these types of identities. And uh, you're going to have to do a bunch of them to try and uh, get as much exposure to them as you can. I'm going to quickly show you a bunch of strategies here for simplifying, okay? Um, I would write these down because these are a very important common denominator, right? It combines two terms together. Uh, factoring like we did, we factored out the coses or we factored out the sines. Factoring is still valid with trig functions. Um, often we change everything to sine. So if you have a secant, change it to 1 over cos. If you have a, a cosecant, change it to 1 over sine. If you have a tan, change it to sine over cos. And if you have a coat, change it to cos over sine, right? Conjugates, that's the way to get rid of those 1 plus sine x's or 1 minus cos x's. That's how we get rid of those. And then rearrangement of the given identities is a big one as well, right? How I talked about calling this 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta, or 1 minus cos squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. The rearrangement of these identities is very useful in solving these or simplifying these expressions as well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, any questions you have, please don't hesitate to come talk to me, and we'll get you sorted out.